Hello and welcome to our biology lesson today. My name is Alice Mwangombe. Now, today we are going to look at reproduction. Um, we are going to look at reproduction and our subtopic will be identification of the reproductive parts of a flower. I hope you enjoy the lesson. Now, our lesson objectives uh, will be, uh, by the end of this lesson, uh, you should be able to state the different parts of a flower, and you should also be able to identify the male and the female parts of a flower. Uh, now, I'm sure that uh, all of you have gone through classification, the topic of classification, and you know what angiosperms are. Now, angiosperms develop specialized structures uh, that are called flowers. Now, these flowers are used for reproduction. Now, a flower is a modified part of a stem in which the primary sex organs are found. Now, when we look at this picture here, we see that this is a plant and then it has a flower. Now, not even one, it has some flowers. Now, we can call this plant an angiosperm and then these are flowers. I'm sure most of you have seen flowers. Uh, in your kitchen garden at home, at school, maybe on your way to school, or yeah, on those routes that you pass through, there are flowers. Now, uh, parts of a flower. Uh, as you can see from this picture, we have several parts of a flower that I want us to look at today. So we have this upper part of this flower that is called the stigma, stigma. Then we have the style, this is the style. Then we have the ovary down here, the ovary. And then we have the anther, this is the anther this part here. Then we have the filament, this rod-like structure that uh, is holding the anthers. This is the filament, the filament. Then we have this part here, very attractive in most flowers, very colorful. It is called the petal, the petal. Then we have this other part, normally it's normally green in most flowers. It's called the sepal, the sepal. And then we have this part here is called the thalamus, or you can even call it the receptacle, the receptacle. And then we have the pedicle, the pedicle. So if you cut a flower, that part that you hold using your hand is what we call the pedicel, the pedicel. Now, so we have the pedicel, we have the receptacle, so the pedicel, the receptacle is here. Then we have the calyx. Now the calyx is composed of the sepals, the sepals. This is a sepal, the green part here, a sepal, the green part here sepals. Then we have the corolla. Now the corolla is made of petals. I told you these attractive uh, covers are called petals. And then we have the stamen and the pistil. The stamen and the pistil. Now the stamen, uh, the stamen the anther, 
in the filament make the stamen. Then the pistil is composed of the stigma, this part here, the stigma, the style, and the ovary. Okay. Now, <clears throat> at our own free time, uh, when you see a flower in your kitchen garden, just cut it. Cut a longitudinal section of it. And then make sure you start cutting, starting um, the cut at the base. And then cut along the carpel to the stigma. Then observe it. Now that you don't have the hand lens at home, just observe it. Just observe the flower. And then try drawing it. And uh, observe the internal parts of that flower. And then you should be careful when you are cutting, not to at least not to destroy the other floral parts. Now this is what you see. This is what you will see. You will see that the internal parts of a flower, uh, that is how they look like. The stigma remains, as you can see from this uh, flower. Then you have the style. You have the ovary in here. Ovary. And then the male parts. We have the anthers and the filaments. The anther. This part is the anther. And then this is the filament. Filament. Now, since I want us to get the, I want you to identify the reproductive parts of a flower or the male and female parts of a flower, this flower here singles out the two. So this part here, we have the anther. It's called the anther. Now, you, you realize that the anthers carry the pollen grains. The anthers carry the pollen grains. And then, this is the filament. The filament. Now, the anthers and the filaments form the male parts of a flower. The male parts of a flower. And then, on this other part here, we have the pistil, the pistil, uh, and the pistil uh, is made of the stigma, the style, and the ovary. The stigma, style, and the ovary make the pistil. Now this part here shows you what is contained in the ovary, and these are ovules. Ovules are normally contained in the ovary. So, in summary, the stamen refers to the male reproductive organs. And then, the, it consists of the filaments and the anthers. Now, these anthers form the pollen grains. It's the anthers that have the, pol the pollen grains. And then we have the pistil. The pistil, uh, it refers to the female reproductive organs and it consists of the ovary, the style, and the stigma. Now, in conclusion, uh, We've looked at the different parts of a flower and so we conclude that the male parts of the female parts of a flower form the female reproductive organs and these are the stigma, the style and the ovary. And then the male reproductive parts of a flower 
are the anthers and the filaments. Now, I leave you with that question. Now that we've looked at the flower, the different parts of the flower, and we have identified the reproductive parts of a flower, I want you to uh, look at this question. What are the functions of a flower? What are the functions of a flower? Thank you very much and see you in our next lesson.